Hello. Today, I'm going to be speaking about Dr. Ruth Benarito and her work as a scientist and inventor that led to her earning the nickname Queen of Cotton. Before we dive into her career, though, I wanted to share a little about her life, starting with her childhood. Born in 1916, Ruth was one of six children of her parents. She spent her early years in New Orleans and came to love the city that she called her home a place that would be special to her throughout her life. Her father was an engineer and her mother was an artist. They believed strongly in education and in women's rights and encouraged her to pursue an education to the fullest extent in a time when few women did. From a young age, she was interested in mathematics and science. Her curiosity and love of learning led her to graduate high school at the young age of 14 and pursue a college degree in chemistry. For her, a degree in chemistry meant she could not only study the subject she loved dearly, but also build a foundation from which to solve the practical problems she noticed in the world around her, skills which she would carry over into her career, as I'll be touching on more later. At the time of graduation, America was entering into the Great Depression, a time of economic hardships, which made finding a job very difficult. Though she had originally wanted to be a teacher, she couldn't find any positions in this field and entered into an alternate pathway by training to become a laboratory technician. Within a few years, and with this new degree and training under her belt, she was able to get a job as a high school teacher in New Orleans. She was hired to teach not only science, but also driver's courses. Since she didn't know how to drive herself, she had to quickly learn this skill. She went on to become the first safety driving teacher in Louisiana and also the first to crash her car by driving it into a ditch. The continued economic hardships brought her family to Chicago, which had better job opportunities for her parents. During this time, she began to teach once again and enrolled in school one final time, which led her to earn a master's and eventually PhD, the highest degree possible, in chemistry from the University of Chicago. Being at the school brought the chance for her to meet many other students and scientists, and she loved getting to learn about their research and other projects and collaborate as she worked with them on them too. She married the love of her life, Frank, and they returned to her home of New Orleans after she was offered a job at the U.S. Department of Agriculture, or USDA's, Southern Regional Research Laboratories in New Orleans, where she would spend the majority of her career. Though she worked on many projects during her time here, she was promoted to the leader of the Cotton Reaction Lab, where she led a team to study cotton. Why cotton, you may ask? Well, cotton was an important crop in Louisiana and to farmers throughout the region. However, the development of synthetic or artificial man-made material offered stiff competition to this material that was once the main material used for clothing, fabrics, and more. And the popularity of cotton began to decline as a result. One of the main issues was that cotton wrinkled very easily, as this picture here shows, and required ironing to get the wrinkles out. Extra work and effort that synthetic fabrics did not need and which meant that these synthetic fibers were more popular among people because they required less work to care for them. Farmers and this industry were hurting and she wanted to help them out. Countless hours and many experiments were performed to learn more about cotton and ways to improve its use in fabrics. Under her direction, her team ultimately went on to discover a key to making cotton less wrinkly using chemical modifications meaning that it could once again compete with synthetic fibers. This non-iron cotton fabric would revolutionize the cotton industry and become one of the most popular fabrics even through today. It has been said that she saved the cotton industry and many farmers who relied on this crop for their jobs and livelihood, and it brought her the nickname Queen of Cotton. Though this was by far her most significant achievement, it was by no means her only one. During her career, she led her team to develop flame and stain-resistant fabrics that would be used in pajamas, mattresses, firefighter and military uniforms, and more. 
as well as a method of turning cotton into a glass-like material that could be used for decorative and other purposes, as you see here. In her later years, while she continued to research cotton fibers, Dr. Benarito returned to the place she loved most and that started this all for her, the classroom, as she began to teach once more at Tulane and the University of New Orleans, training the next generation of scientists and researchers. Over the many years in the lab, she would receive 55 patents or official documents giving an inventor recognition and rights to their invention for her creations, such as the no wrinkle cotton. She even authored over 200 articles published in scholarly journals as well. Her work brought her many recognitions and awards too, including the USDA's highest honor, the Distinguished Service Award, the Southern Chemist Award, of which she was the first female recipient, recognition by President Lyndon Johnson for her scientific and teaching achievements, induction into the National Inventors Hall of Fame, and a MIT Lifetime Achievement Award. When she passed away in 2013, her life was celebrated for her many accomplishments in science and research, as well as the countless lives she touched as a teacher and mentor. Her legacy and memory live on today as an inspiration to young women and scientists everywhere. There's no better way to end this presentation than by sharing some words of wisdom from Dr. Benarito herself. I consider myself fortunate to have had so many opportunities. It's true there were obstacles. Does anyone ever travel this life without obstacles? Each of us has a limited amount of energy to spend in a lifetime, and each should strive to spend that energy in improving this world by constructive uses of his individual talents. And clearly, there's no one whose life better represents this than Dr. Benarito herself.